Alright guys, depending on when this video goes out, Granded Nero Fest is already out or it's coming out tonight, but this guide nonetheless is going to let you know everything you need to know about this event, aside from the obvious lotto part. Now, if you're only really going to be farming lotto and you don't care about all the little free goodies you're able to get from the event, or you don't care about the challenge quest, all you got to know is the lotto is really good, and if you got Koyenskaya, you're going to have an absolute breeze farming the hardest difficulty because it was like it was almost made for Koyan Sky to be able to absolutely trash all the farming in this event even though this did come out on JP a little bit before Koyanskaya came out. My running theories that they were like, hey, see how annoying it was to farm these like little nodes over here that are like a 112 node? Well, what if we gave you Buster Farming, right? It's almost the event that I believe they put out to kind of sell Buster Farming to people and be like, hey, you don't have to worry about looping or anything like that. You just give yourself raw NP. And if you have Koyanskaya, you're gonna have a very easy time with this one. I don't even believe you need Oberon because the free quest are not that chunky realistically if you just have like a decent type advantage servant right so you're fighting against casters and you got a rider or a berserker and they could just do decent enough damage you'll probably coast through the event because the enemies again are not all that large but we're going to get into all of that in today's video but before we begin if you have not already make sure you leave a like on the video and you subscribe to the channel for that sweet daily fgo content where your boy's going to make sure that you are informed on what is going on on both versions of the game, especially with those new Summer Servants that are gonna be coming out over on JP. You don't wanna miss the guides that come out for when they actually release. Also, if you wanna see me pull for Servants live or play FGO in general, I go live every weekday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so don't make sure, or I guess, make sure to not miss out on that. I guess I misspoke there, but anyway. Let's start getting into this. The first main shebang. Let's talk about the free quest, because this is like the main thing that people are going to care about, right? These are the main, you know, things that you're going to be farming all the time. And it's probably going to be this champion one over here for both of them, right? You're probably going to want to be hitting up the high difficulty one, because not only does it drop the lotto material, but you also get the medals for the shop. Because keep in mind, there is still an event shop that still has some pretty good stuff in there. And also don't forget that you still want to hit these up, because if you're in desperate need of QP, and I know everybody watching this is in desperate need of QP, you can sell your excess gold medals by the time the lotto actually ends. Like Once you've cleared out the shop, you can just start grinding these up convert these into gold ones and then just start selling them off for extra QP. It's very, very nice. I love that they added these in here. But as you can see, they're all a little bit weird. None of these are quite normal nodes. And I do just want to kind of affirm for everybody that if you have to go farm, you know, the 90 stage over here and not the like 90 plus over here, that is absolutely fine. You can take a little bit of a hit for not being able to clear out the shop to just do the lotto because the boxes over here are good enough, right? Like if you can only hit up this and get all these materials, that is absolutely fine. Because as you can see, you're gonna be getting a ton of stuff for your skills, you're still gonna get EXP cards, you'll still get QP, you'll still get a nice amount of mana prisms, and you'll also get very nice materials over here. Very common things that a lot of servants are going to need, and they're going to need in abundance. So even after you start getting over to your 11th box and on, it is fine if you just do not have an account that can actually, you know, hit up these massive champion quests over here. Because these, if you don't have Koyanskaya, might be a little bit more touch and go for some masters. Now, there are some strategies you can use. Like, let's say you have Castoria. She's really good because don't forget that Castoria gives 30% to the entire party and you could bring two of them, right? So you can have your two main farmers. You can have, say, servant number one, servant number two, Castoria in the third slot. She gives everybody, you know, all the NP. You can plug out for your other Castoria. And as long as one of your other servants has a battery or they have a start of charge CE that can get them up to 100%, you can kind of scuff your way through some of these nodes. And again, not all that bad because these enemies aren't super large. Say, for instance, you have a starting charge CE on someone like Medea, for instance, right? So you can get Medea from, you know, the 60% that she's going to get from Castoria and then anything that will give her an additional 40% if you have to do that and you can't do max EE setups, she could take care of this first guy and then she can use her own skill to charge her own NP and maybe take this guy. I don't know. This might be a little bit too high for someone like Medea, but you get the gist, right? And then your AOE person can clean up the last node, right? Don't forget that you could play around with servants that you've got to kind of beat some of these nodes. Again, if you're a bit of a newer player, you just started playing for Anniversary, you just started playing for Morgan, maybe your account is not quite as strong. You don't maybe have some of these servants leveled. Obviously, as you go along, you can even start opening up boxes early to try to ease your way into some of these nodes. But 
I wouldn't even like really stress about it until you start getting down here to this one and this one over here. Cause as you can see, this drops two to three of the lotto material and three of each of the currency, or this drops three to four and you know also three of each of the currency, but this one as well. So these technically are a little bit better than this one. And this might be easier for some people because you can have, like, say, your single target if, again, you're not doing Koyan Sky setups. If you have Koyan Sky, you could skip ahead because you could just bust or farm your way through any of these. Just bring your Morgan, whoever, and just start clapping this up. It'll be fine. But if you're, you know, having to use, like, Castoria farming or something, your single target could take care of this. And then if you have, say, like, Space Ishtar, two enemies should be in the range where she might be able to get 50% back to where then her own battery, for instance, could, you know, mop up this last node, right? And so for those, it can kind of be a bit easier to do because Shen Gong and stuff for like this normally is what people would use. But because there's only one enemy and they're all berserkers, the refund you're going to be getting back is not going to be very high. So if you can't do this one, don't stress about it. These are definitely going to be a lot easier for people that do not have Koyan Skaya because there's more enemies on the field, right? So your art servants that are going to be looping are going to have a little bit more wiggle room to work with because they're going to be getting more NP gain back, right? You can obviously also do things like, uh, say, use your AOE arts person right here. Someone like Berserker Musashi might not work as well. They probably do need to have their own battery. But, you know, again, Space Ishtar, let's say, you know, you can farm this one, have her battery for wave three. But then, I don't know, you have Kentoki Berserker or something right here who can get the 60% from Castoria plus their own 50. And they can clap up this guy over here. Those are just some ideas for being able to farm these. But again, there's no shame in going down to say the monarch node over here and kind of just farming this to get you know actually technically more drops for the lotto thing because you see three to five right there as opposed to three to four you just don't get the actual medals right here which is why again these are preferred but you can make do with doing this right like you can make do just farming the monarch ones over here because at the end of the day it's a lotto right as long as you're filling up on boxes you're gonna be set right it's just kind of a more like well, this is technically a little bit more efficient because you get a little bit more QP in the long run because you're getting extra like gold medals and stuff along those lines, right? There's also things to consider like um, if you're going to be farming a node a lot, you could look at this and be like, oh, I really need this snake eyes thing. So I'm actually going to farm this because for some reason I need snake eyes more than I need Magatamas or something, right? You can also use that as like a valid excuse to be like, oh man, I really don't need ice, but I really do need horseshoes over here. So just some things to kind of take into consideration uh, if you can't actually do like the champion nodes you can just take a step back down to like the monarch nodes but that's pretty much the main thing that everybody's going to be like farming for this event let's talk about some of the goodies you actually get because people don't actually mention this for one if you have nero her costume will be available again and i know that doesn't sound like a big deal to some people but look at how cute this costume is right if you're going to be using nero who's already not a super great servant at least you can be using her in style right i know I know that I already have this costume, but I would be absolutely flubin' over here if I could get my grubby little mitts on this costume. Although, you know, some of you guys might be preferring costume two or three over here, but hey, it's still a cute costume. That's a very nice thing you're able to get. You'll also be able to pick up Divine Three-Legged Race over here. Not the craziest CE, you're probably just gonna be using it for a lot of the challenge quests, but you know, if you don't have one of these CEs that gives you a guts thing, I don't know, it might be handy in some random fight later on down the line. It's just kind of a nice little thing to have. You also will get this very cute Brynhildr CE. I kind of wish it actually had, you know, um, a starting battery. It would make the lotto farming a bit easier for, you know, being able to do full CE setups. And also because the CE is not super great. I mean, yeah, 8% to everything is fine, I guess, in four stars. But let's be realistic. You're just going to be using it to get these um the more drops over here right whereas this one if you're curious gives you more damage for the challenge quest right which is why it also gives you a guts so it's at least more tailored to helping you out there then finally uh there is a ce that's going to be on the banner that i think is pretty decent like it's not the craziest thing ever if you have stuff like aerial drive for instance you're gonna be using that for buster guys or if you have um dive to blue you'll probably use that for arts but if you know you're gonna be pulling on the banner because i know some people are probably gonna summon over here because people like Nero, you know, I can't stop people from summoning on the banner. And so if you go on this banner and you happen to pick up this, and um, not NP, but the CE, for one, it's not bad to have for the event because it does give you gold drops. And like I said earlier, you know, having a starting charge CE for, again, someone like Medea in that case, right? So she can auto fire her NP without using her battery and you can save the battery for another node. That can be nice. And you're at least getting something out of it. You're not getting a lot of drops, but technically you could view this as getting more QP 
and it's not terrible, right? It gives you a 50% charge, and if you can maximally break it, you get 10%, which, you know, whoopee, whatever, right? But, you know, it's it's decent enough. I thought I'd mention that, like, hey, if you pull this from the gotcha, you might be able to get some usage out of it. But that's pretty much the main stuff for the actual event. Let's move into the challenge quest. There are two sets of challenge quests for this. We have NeroFest 1's challenge quest, and we have NeroFest 2's challenge quest. And you get, you know, all these goodie rewards over here for going through and completing these. Now, this first one, the 28T one, this should be really easy. Like you should be able to come in here and just absolutely clap these up. Because as you'll notice, these guys ain't got break bars. Like these are very old bosses, right? The main thing here with Herc is that you just got to beat all of his lives, right? It's kind of like a lore accurate Heracles fight where he's got the 12 lives. You got to break through the 11 guts and then he's got his last life. It's really not all that much more difficult than that. Like it's kind of just like going to be a long fight. But keep in mind, once you get him down to like lower HP, you could potentially knock out a couple lives a turn with like, say, a big crit. Then you could do like an NP and then another crit that can knock out like three lives right there, like in that one turn. So just keep in mind that you could really do pretty well on this one. This might be annoying for some people if your boxes aren't super set up, but even look at this, his, he just doesn't have a whole lot of health. It'll be a little annoying because he's a berserker, but you could just bring a foreigner that has resistance to berserkers, right? And you could absolutely clap this up. I could maybe see this being a harder one for some people because it is just kind of long based on the fact that he just has a lot of lives. But again, you can chop away at multiple lives per turn. So it's really not all that bad. And what I will probably be doing during Nero Fest is I'll probably do my normal daily upload. And then probably later during the day, I'll probably upload like me doing each of these challenge quests, right? Just so you guys can kind of see, oh, like it's not all that bad. Like I'll just clear it with like random people that I've got. Um, this one basically you just have to kill Skahawk and Ku at the same time. If you don't, the other one will go sick, nasty, goaded with the sauce, Super Saiyan 3, and they will mollywop your team. So just make sure when you get down to Ku and Skahawk, you try to take them out at the same time. That can be a little bit difficult because one, servants are very strong nowadays and you might do a little bit too much damage to one of them. Also, Ku likes to spam his triple dodge skill, which can be very annoying for stalling things out. But keep in mind, they are Lancers. It's not like they're Herc and they're Berserkers. If you bring like a really strong Saber, you can start like chopping down on Skahawk over here, fire an AoE NP and probably knock them both out, right? Like it's not all that difficult. It just takes a little bit of timing, but it's not that bad. And I believe on my first clear of this, I actually did just take out Skahawk first and then I dealt with Ku afterwards. It makes the fight a little bit more difficult, but it's not impossible, right? Like you could still get through it. Uh, then we have this note over here, which, you know, I could go through, read all this stuff over here, but realistically, just bring Medea. Like, Medea borderline solo claps up this fight, and everybody has Medea. This is literally just the Medea fight right here, because they're so weak that Medea can actually take these guys out with her own NP, despite its very bad scaling, and she removes all their debuffs and buffs and everything, and it just makes it very, very easy. Just bring Medea. It's super easy. Everybody can get this one done. Then we have the Siegfried one over here. Okay, there's a couple of ways that you can actually kind of get around this. One is just bringing someone that has pierced defense because Siegfried has ridiculous amounts of defense. As you can see right here, he's got 200%. You are like not damaging this guy, basically. You gotta bring someone that can pierce defense or you could do damage over time. You could do people that burn or do poison or curse, stuff like that. As you can also see, they recommend using something like Divinity because Divinity as a passive skill gives you flat damage. Stuff like that can help you get around it. But the easiest thing realistically, just bring someone with pierce defense. If you have the Ronnie CE, I believe it's the Ronnie CE that gives you uh, special damage against Berserkers. That also pierces defense as well. You could slap that on somebody and you could just absolutely clap this fight. I mean, if you've got Emia, you're absolutely eating with this fight because you just bring him. You do like one to two NPs and you just completely knock this guy out. So that's a strategy for that. If you want to make your life a little bit harder, you can, uh, you know, use curse or damage over time, stuff like that. It's like one of the few times where that stuff is actually really useful, especially because he's only got 50k HP. So if you have those people that can do like, uh, the super curse or like super burn, super poor, like toxic stuff like that, where you can even expedite the amount of damage you're doing every turn. That also makes it a lot easier. Uh, then we have Maeve over here. All right. So basically Maeve is going to have like 85 billion different passives and you got to take out the soldiers around her and they start losing the damage. Now, um, I forget the exact order that these are actually in, but once you start like knocking out the actual card resistances, you can stop taking out the other guys. Because then around then you're like, oh, I'm using a Buster Servant. I've cleared the Buster Resistance. I can actually start doing damage, sir. And you can actually just take her out. But basically, take out the guys around Maeve. 
because they're going to be um, responsible for her buffs. As she starts to lose her soldiers, she'll start losing buffs, right? Basically, each soldier corresponds to one buff. So just take them out and then take out Maeve. Shouldn't be all that bad. Gilgamesh over here, very beefy, very chunky. He just hits really hard. If you just bring in a very strong, like single target person, you could probably chomp this guy away in a couple of NPs. Um, even someone like Melusine, who doesn't have special damage against him, like say uh, Skahawk, who's like anti-divine, or they recommend Tama, uh, Tama Lancer, who I don't know if I would really use Tama Lancer for the fight, um, cause she might get melted cause Gil does like the crit a lot, but you know, someone like Skahawk or even Ankito over here is good. But even Melusine, who doesn't have damage mod, a couple of NPs with like double cast or we will probably chop him down pretty quickly. Do keep in mind that as soon as you go into the Gilgamesh fight, you do lose all of your NP. He will give himself an attack buff every single turn. If you try to remove his attack buffs, I think he like fully charges his NP and then like gives himself an even bigger attack buff. So do not remove his buffs. Um, I know that they like built that in there to be uh, very, very annoying. So they're like, oh, you're going to try to take away his attack buffs. All right, well, then he's just going to give himself even more attack. So just don't fall into that trap being like, oh, he's going to give himself 20 attack buffs. What if I just remove them? Do not remove those, right? Do not take away his attack buffs. He will uh, go sick nasty on you. Then we have this. Now, I could explain the like order for this fight, but thankfully the wiki over here, you could just come check. You just want to <laughs> do this. Just take them out in this order and it's pretty easy right then final encore uh this one is kind of like the updated version of the fight there's not a specific order i believe like the other one but you just want to leave nero for last because nero over here will give everybody a bunch of guts which is super annoying look at this she gives him 10 guts if she's like the last person alive so just take out nero last right like this one is more like not a specific kind of easy one i would say but you can kind of just take out people based on what you think is more annoying you're like oh i can't really deal with you know medea's defense up so let me just take that out. Or if you're like, oh, Jack giving 15k HP is not really a whole lot. So let me just take her out first. I don't really care about that. You know, you can kind of plan around who you've got in your box or how you prefer to play. It's a little bit more, I guess, loose on what you want to be able to do. You can kind of take people out at your leisure. Now, this one I think gets a little bit more annoying because as you can see they started to give people break bars around here. Spartacus just gives himself a lot of HP every single turn. You just gotta take him out. <laughs> you gotta try to like just absolutely annihilate this fool because he will just heal himself a lot. I mean, look at this. This guy's gonna be giving himself like 90k HP every single turn. Not the most like annoying thing, I guess. Like people like Demeter are a little bit more annoying because not only do they recover HP, but they also have big thicky defense. So think of him just like Demeter Light. If you wanna kind of look at it in that way and be like, okay, so he's gonna give himself technically more HP but there's no defense, so he's really squishy. So as long as you can just hit him really hard, you can you can really mitigate the difficulty of this fight. Um, all right, now, okay, this this one this one is very annoying. I had to go back and like actually look at this one. But basically, she's gonna cycle through these different resistances over here, right? Where like on specific turns, she's only vulnerable to one card type, and it can get very very annoying. Like I don't think this one is hard. It's just very tedious like i had very bad luck when i was doing this one and it just took me a long time to get through the fight i still won when i did it but it just took me a while because she's cycling through being immune to different card types over here and then she's just cycling through classes as well right so if you want to try to cover yourself and be like oh i'll just bring a berserker or something so i can you know take her out no matter what she's on well then she's gonna hit you hard and if you want to bring an alter ego well whenever she's a lancer you're gonna do no damage so yeah, look, she could be a little bit annoying. This one, I don't think is particularly hard. I just find it to be very, very tedious to do because she's always cycling through these things and it can be very annoying. You're like, well, now I got to wait for her to be vulnerable to quick again because I brought MHX Alter. It's just more of a tedious fight. If year one, basically, if year one over here was kind of like the easier, but kind of like, oh, these are like neat gimmicky fights. I find a lot of the ones in here to be a little annoying and tedious. I mean, especially because this Arash one over here. So Arash, basically, you're trying to wait out three NPs from him. A very like popular strategy when this originally came out was to just always maintain 100% defense. So you could just face tank all of his, um, NPs that were coming his way. Now, thankfully now we have Castoria. So the fact that he pierces invincibility and evasion doesn't really matter because you can pop a Castoria NP, Solemn Defense has you covered. But as you can see, bro is absolutely chunky over here, right? Like this dude is absolutely huge. So you can either try to take him out if you can do 5 million points of damage, I suppose. But if you can't do that, just let him fire his NP like five times and you win, right? 
like it's not all that bad. Castori gets a lot of value in this one. It's just kind of a stally fight. I think I remember when this originally came out, I used Tama Lancer because she actually gives him more NP on her um her charm. She gives people that extra tick of NP as a demerit, but that helped me get through this fight a lot faster. <laughs> Um, I don't advise doing that because it could be very, very annoying. All right, this is literally just the redux of the Ku and Skahawk fight, where it's like, if you take out Karna first, Arjuna gets buffs. If you take out Arjuna first, Karna gets buffs, right? Because you can see they give each other different buffs when you start moving their break bars, right? Now this, this was very annoying for me because Arjuna already has an NP with insta-kill on it and bonus insta-kill for using somebody that has divinity and then he's gonna get that even more. So like, even if you protect yourself with invincibility, you're probably getting insta-killed. I remember this one, I got very lucky because I took out Karna first and then I was working on Arjuna. My last guy was still alive and I was like, oh no, I'm about to get insta-killed by this NP, but it all worked out. So just keep this one in mind that it's kind of like the redux of Ku versus Skahawk, except instead of trying to take them both out at the same time, they at least both still give each other something. And uh, do keep in mind that when you break his bar, he will try to blast you. He will absolutely try to blast you with his NP, but that's kind of what it's like. It's, again, slightly more annoying than the other one. That just seems to be the name of the game over here. All right, now we have Da Vinci over here. <sighs> okay, this is one of those fights that I imagine if you guys played Guildfest, I believe there was one like this. It was the MHX Alter one, where basically, as you fight these different enemies, they give you different effects and stuff. And so you kind of will probably need to have the wiki open for this one to keep track of what all these guys are doing. As you're slowly like whittling these guys down to take out Da Vinci herself, it's gonna be very annoying, all right? And I think you have to take out these guys first because Da Vinci, I think if you try to take her out first, she gives herself or everybody else a bunch of defense. So you have to take them out, but you also have to manage what all they're doing, right? You can't just be like, all right, I'm gonna take out this Manticore. Whoops, I got sealed for two turns, right? You need to be able to plan around things. Just have this open, just so you can kind of see all the different buffs. It's, again, a little tedious, but once you know that you can't take Da Vinci out first, and you gotta take all these guys out, once you know what they all do, it's a little bit better. It's a little bit better. And they're not, I can't say they're not all that beefy because I know that, you know, not everybody's got NP5 Morgan on deck. And so it's like, oh man, they might actually be a little too beefy for some people to like one tap them, but just bring your best sustain team, right? Like a Morgan Castoria Merlin team would be pretty good. Although I'd be very worried about Morgan accidentally taking out Da Vinci over here because you don't want to take her out first. So just keep that in mind, but a very good sustain team will get you through this. Uh, no problem, right? All right, then we have the Hassan one over here. This one's pretty infamous. <laughs> this is pretty infamous because you have to take out Hassan first, but he's got like 80 billion of these people and you're kind of just waiting for him to sacrifice the other Hassans. And while that does give him extra NP, you do want him to like do that as it progresses the fight a little bit, right? Um, as you can see over here, you know, once you break his first bar, he's going to make himself a little bit of a chunky guy over here. But yeah, basically he'll be sacking Hassan, so he'll be giving himself charge, but like, I believe you want him to still do that. You want him to start like taking out the other people because it makes it easier to manage or something like that. Just bring your strongest caster, right? Just bring your strongest caster and just smack this guy on the face. Like I know I'll probably be bringing Sanzo or something, but then again, you don't want to get insta-killed because, you know, Hassan in his passive, you know, has just the 5% chance to insta-kill everybody. And we know that whenever the NPCs use that, it, it goes ham taro. You know, NPCs, when they have insta-kill, it works all the time. When I have insta-kill, it never works. <laughs> Except against those Lamis. I guess it came in handy then. But yeah, basically, he'll sack the Hassans, and that'll kind of progress you through the fight, I suppose. But just bring a strong caster. Just punch him in the face. You just punch your grandpa in the face over here. <laughs> All right, then we have another one of these. This is another one of those like, oh, you gotta like take all the people out and whenever they die, you know, they give each other buffs. They have a recommended kill loader over here. And then they also have like a stronger version over here where everybody's got a Bible chapter worth of effects. You just take them out whatever you think is the most annoying one first, right? Whatever you think is like the most annoying effect, you just go in that order, right? Because I don't know. I, I like these ones more where it's like, oh, there's a definite order that makes it a lot easier to just kind of like truck through it where this one where it's like, just take them out at your leisure. Just take out whoever you think is the most annoying. It's like, great, fantastic. I got to use my brain on this one. So realistically, whoever you've got, whether they're going to try to solo it with say like Ku Alter or Chi Shi Huang, or you're just going to be using your best DPS, 
it's going to come down to whatever you're actually going to be using, right? I believe it's still wanting to take out Nero last because I'm pretty sure she has the same effect where she uh, gives everybody guts. It's not 10 guts this time. So if you want to deal with everybody having extra guts, I, I guess, man. But I don't know. I always just take out Nero last. That always seems to be the name of the game over here. But yeah, so yeah, sorry for these like last two of them over here. The advice is just bring your strongest guy realistically. Like he's just big and chunky. You just got to hit him really hard. And this one, bring a team that you can kind of have in the fight for, I don't know, a range of like seven to 10 turns, right? You're probably going to be in here for quite a while, uh, maybe even longer than that, depending on your box. And they all just have annoying effects that you're just going to have to memorize and find out which ones do what and what works best for your box, right? It's one of those ones where it's just very hard to give like, oh, just bring this exact person because, you know, if you don't have them, you're kind of up a creek when it comes to luck. At least these ones are just a bit easier because it's like very simplified. Just take these guys out. <laughs> just take these guys out. It'll be very easy, right? But that's pretty much it for Nero Fest. I mean, we talked about the lotto. We talked about the challenge quest. We talked about the banner, all the free stuff you'll be able to get. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And let me know if you're actually going to be attempting either one of these. I think everybody should at least do the 2018 ones. Um, even if you're not like a huge challenge quest guy, you find them to be annoying because I know there are people like that that just always avoid challenge quests at least do these ones because these ones are not super difficult these ones are actually kind of fun in a way like they're not they have like a gimmick that's kind of like once you know the gimmick it's very easy to exploit and it's pretty easy to clear some of these can be a little annoying but i think the only ones that like okay if you're really struggling you don't have to do the hassan one or you don't have to do this one if it's just too much of a headache for you but even the hassan one just if it takes you a couple of tries, you know, just bring your best DPS. Maybe you get unlucky on a couple of insta-kill things. Uh, maybe you could kind of try to scuff it a little bit by bringing people who are insta-kill immune. People like uh, Scotty, the caster one, who gives you your entire party insta-kill resistance on her NP, right? People like that can be very good. Ereshkigal does the same thing, although she's a lancer against assassins, maybe it's not as good, but you know, there are servants, there's options you can bring to kind of get around some of these annoying gimmicks. It's just some of them can be a bit more annoying. Like this one, you gotta take out everybody. And if you don't, Da Vinci punishes you by giving everybody defense, right? Or you know, Suzuka over here just rotating around. And so you might get screwed being like, well, I wasn't able to take her out on this turn. So not gonna wait for it to cycle all the way around, <laughs> you know, so that could be a little bit of going. But yeah, I encourage you to try to do as many of these as you can. Uh, maybe during like kind of the first part before we start to get some of the better ones. Um, because like I said, this one is not like the best thing you can be farming. You can kind of afford to miss out a couple of runs on this, but it's once these start to drop that you really want to start hitting the ground running on a lot of these because these are the really good ones to farm. But let me know you guys' thoughts in the comments down below. Let me know if you're going to summon. If you already summoned, let me know if you got what you wanted. And you know what? Let me know your goals for boxes in the comments down below. I know that I at least like to get 100 every event, but good lordy, I am in need of QP so desperately. I am tired of looking at my Melusine at level one, skill one. <laughs> like I need to get her leveled up stat. Like I needed that last month. So I'm, I don't know, I might go for like 200, 300 boxes. Who knows? I'm a little bit of a mad lad, but I'll catch you guys on the flippity floppity. You guys have yourselves a good farm. Peace late guys.